Welcome to a place where innovation knows no bounds, where the ordinary transforms into the extraordinary. CES, the global stage for cutting-edge technology, unfolds like a tapestry of wonder. Picture telescopes unveiling the mysteries of the cosmos, plant-based leather crafting a sustainable future, and weather equipment predicting storms. As we venture into the technological marvels showcased at CES, prepare to be immersed in a world where the boundaries of what's possible are not just pushed, but shattered. Welcome to the awe-inspiring world of cool tech. Some exhibits were filmed at CES Unveiled, a special media-only event that takes place two days before the show floor opens. These exhibits will be identified at the beginning of their segments with the CES Unveiled logo in the corner of your screen. So this is the brand new SkyTed mask we've developed. So the goal of the mask is to be able to carry out phone calls in airplanes where you have 300 people sitting next to each other. So when you place the mask, you will be able to carry out your call with a microphone placed inside and no one around you will be able to hear you. So the goal is to really have the voice you are emitting directly transmitted to the person you want to talk to via your phone, via Zoom, Microsoft Teams. So I can show you how it works. I was talking in the mask and as you can see there's no voice coming out. Available now? Yes, so it's going to be available starting tomorrow. We're launching our Kickstarter on the 8th. So stay tuned, we have all the information directly on the banner. And we also have the QR code if you're interested to, uh, to see all the details, all the features uh, as we've developed an application as well to, uh, to track all, the, all the, the information linked to your mask. Hey, hello, so this, the product is called Estia. This is the first smartphone-based telescope in the world. So what it is, it uses the camera of your smartphone, uh, so either iPhone or any Android phone. Um, then you put it on the product and it uses the camera to capture beautiful photos of the sky, so deep sky objects like nebula, galaxies for example, even planets. Uh, you also have a center remote for landscape photos and the app is very user friendly, you get to, to know a lot about uh, what you're observing at the moment, uh, educational content also, and you are being guided uh, through the whole process. If you're looking to find a certain constellation, will it help guide you to it? Yeah, exactly. You have, uh, you have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, tips and help uh, into the app uh, to get to your, uh, to your goal to, 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 to get this photo. Mm -hmm. All right, so my telescope, telescope at home, I can actually see the rings of Saturn with yeah. it. Will that, is that lens strong enough? Um, the, uh, on Saturn, I, I, I'm not sure. I think you can see it, but uh, the main purpose of this, uh, of this telescope is the, the use of ease first, uh, then the price, but also you, you, you get to have uh, a lot of different options, for example, the, the moon also, the sun, and deep space objects, uh, which is difficult to have all this uh, at the same time with uh, one traditional telescope. So it has a built-in ND on it, so you can aim it right at the sun? Uh, yeah, uh, inside there are yeah. like uh, yeah. a lot of uh, uh -huh. different lenses, That's network cool. of lenses, yes. Okay, so it looks like I am at the Ambient Weather Network booth here at CES. What am I looking at today? Uh, what you're going to be looking at right here is going to be one of our newer products, it's our WS1965. Uh, this uses a pi arm array. Up here is going to be your rain gauge. Down below here is going to be your temperature and humidity sensor. We also have your wind speed and wind direction indicators as well. Uh, this station connects to this display here. It is also capable of connecting to additional sensors, these three additional sensors here. These additional sensors will display directly on the console. This was designed for customers that want a more simple display but still have access to additional sensor data. Um, and then if we move on down the line, we can look at our array of sensors. We have our WH31PF, which is our pool float sensor, our WH31SM, which is used for soil moisture, mostly gardening or flower beds. Uh, we have a leak detector, which is mostly used in utility rooms for customers that have a hot water heater issue or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. Probe sensors, I've had folks use them in water holding tanks as well as spas. Lightning detector, kind of self-explanatory. Yep. Um, then we have our particulate monitoring software uh, sensors as well, being our AQIN, which is our air quality indoor sensor, which measures three different parameters. Your, uh, it's going to be PM10, PM25, and CO2. 
Uh, and then if we move here, this is going to be our mid-range station. This would be our WS2000. WS2000, your primary difference is going to be your display. Your display here is going to be, it's actually going to show every additional sensor that you have. It also has a wider compatibility with a wider array of sensors. So this station is compatible with our soil moisture sensors, our lightning detector, our leak alerts, and also our uh, air quality sensor. Um, and that's due to the console. Now, uh, if we move around over here, this is our Kestrel MET 6000. This is our professional level station. This can be uh, configured into a Wi-Fi or a cellular state. Um, they are used mostly deployed in remote locations uh, for uh, industrial projects and or farmers. And then we come around this corner to our semi-professional station. Uh, this is going to be our WS5000. What you're going to be looking here is that this is really going to be the same consoles you get with the WS2000. Still contains all the features and the same compatibility. But here we have an independent rain gauge and independent anemometer. Now the rain gauge can be mounted at a location where the customer knows they receive better rainfall, and then they can also place the anemometer up on their roof where they know they're going to get the best wind speed and wind direction, as well as good UV and light indication. Um, now these. All of our devices communicate back to our consoles using radio frequency, the 915 megahertz band. Um, this station is compatible once again with that wide array of sensors that we have. Um, and uh, that's really our stations. Um, but if you'd like to come one more time around, uh, one thing that we had recently released would be our weather window. So all of these stations are able to connect to Wi-Fi as well as to upload data to the ambient weather network. Now, this is really for folks that may, may not necessarily have a weather station, but they want to actually look at the weather data from a local weather station. So they would take this device, establish an account on ambientweather.net, and then connect it to one of their favorite stations, and then they can customize the tiles that they see. So that way they can see everything at a glance that they would like from their neighbor station or somebody down the road. That, that's great. You can't always put outdoor sensors on your property. Absolutely. That is something that is uh, very much that we're more for for folks that say they live in an apartment or something of that sort, not really necessarily feasible for them. Uh, another one of our new sensors is our refrigerator and freezer sensor. This is additional oh, that's great. just to keep it so the batteries last longer. Um, and uh, it also has a little bit stronger of an antenna in it so it can get out of the fridge or freezer. Mm, um, this is our ambient weather hub. Um, this is an option for, once again, a lot of businesses. Individuals do use them as well, but it replaces your display. So this simply plugs into Ethernet, or you can connect it to Wi-Fi. This will read all the sensors that it currently has, um, and it can display that data directly on ambient weather, which will allow you to view that data remotely from anywhere in the world, and not have to necessarily have a local display. Okay, uh, and so that's pretty much uh, what we have today. Um, any other questions I can answer for you? Where uh, can our viewers find more information on your products? Uh, they can go to ambientweather.com. If they'd actually like to look at the uh, data side of it, they can go to ambientweather.net. We also have an application called Ambient Weather Network. Huh. Great. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. You let me know what. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to introduce a brand new product that we're introducing from Peel Lab. We are a startup from Osaka, Japan, um, working within the pineapple leather field. So all the products that you see in front of you here are made from our pineapple leather, which is a combination of pineapple as well as a water resin that holds it all together. So just like you make paper, we break down the leaves of the pineapple into the fiber that you see in front of you here, and from there combine it with the water, high level compression that turns it into the leather field that you have here. The and it's, you said it's the leaves. Correct. So it's the very bottom, the base of the, the pineapple are these very big, thick leaves that we use to uh, press down to make the leather. So we break into the fiber here and then turn into leather. Anything that you can do with animal leather, you can do with our leather. The best part is ours is eco-friendly, sustainable. Um, and uses zero water for production. So the biggest waste product that comes from creating animal leather is water, right? And the water tanning. is not used prep. Yeah. So the tanning is one of the most dangerous process for a lot of the tanners, which causes high rates of cancer. Ours does not have any of that. So the, the texture, feel, thickness, color can all be adjusted according to what clients are looking for. Is this available in this country right now? It is. So right now, though we're based in Osaka, Japan, we're starting the expansion here to the U.S. market. And if we want to learn more about it, where can um, our viewers go? Absolutely. So there's a QR code on the top over there and also um, our website at peellab.com. Um, from there, you can get all the information about the process, 
our slide deck about how the process is made as well as information about ordering and a few of our current clients right now to see how the products are being used. And that would be P-O-P-E-E-L. Correct. That is correct. All right. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. So, we're going to show So, who are you and what are we looking at today? Good morning, I'm Vincenzo Maresca, CEO of Visual Note. We are here to presenting our new product, but it's best to speak a little bit about the previous one. It's this LED strip that you can mount directly on your guitar fretboard. And once you have had this, your guitar became the 2.0 guitar and learning new method. Okay, why? Because it's super easy to find your first chord, or maybe also your second and third and fourth. Every finger matches the color, so first finger is red, the second is green, etc. And you can put that on any guitar? Any guitar. I can grab my Stratocaster and go, go to work? Yes. Absolutely, yes. All right. Skates is the same. Okay, never miss a note again. No headache to, to, to remember all this. But if you want to play along with a, a song, for instance, something like this. You can easily see into the flow what's happening. You can slow it down. You can loop a specific part. Now I assume you're in a standard E tuning right now? Yeah, absolutely. All right, are you able to go into a tuning with this? Yeah, also. Okay. You have all the open tuning that you want, obviously, in the tuner and you can uh, set up uh, as you prefer. Mm -hmm. and once you will be a pro, you can also... I mean, uh, exciting uh, lighting effects for mm -hmm. your live performance. Yeah, yeah. All right, so is this available in this country now? Uh, yes, but we are searching for a distributor to cut out uh, the shipping costs because obviously shipping from Europe uh, to US uh, is affected by an heavy cost uh, of shipping. Mm -hmm. So, uh, If our viewers want to learn more about this, where can they look? Yes, they just can go to our website, that's visual-note.com for all the infos. We are always uh, available for uh, uh, more details and uh, super welcome to any question on our product. Great, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you very much. Even at CES, you have the fusion of technology and sport. Soccer playing drones. These agile marbles take the field with precision, showcasing a dance of artificial intelligence and athleticism. Witness as they leap through the air, dribbling with finesse, and scoring goals with unmatched precision.